All right, all right, here we go into rectangles on their sides. What? Let's check that out and let's see how this is actually conceptually just like what we've been doing. So remember, you always want to keep geometry first, which means that we need positive area when we find the area of a region. But in this case, we're going to tip our rectangles on the right, so we'll see what that changes as far as our concept. Find the area of the region bounded by x equals y squared and x equals 6 minus y. So let's just do a rough sketch of this. x equals y squared looks something like this. It's a parabola on its side. Oh, yes. And if you've got a nice teacher or professor, they're going to probably provide you with the region. If not, what you can always do is solve for y and see that you get plus or minus the square root of x if you really need to. x equals 6 minus y, what's that going to be? Well, it's pretty easy to solve out. We'll add y to one side, subtract x to the other, and you're really just graphing the line y equals 6 minus x, which is a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept somewhere up here. And again, our goal is to just kind of sketch this thing out, right? That's, that's what we want. We don't need the exact area, right? Now, looking at this, it's kind of interesting to see that we could, if we really wanted to, we could draw a rectangle like this because you'd have a top curve here and a bottom curve there. But then when you get to this point, you'd have a top curve here and a bottom curve there. That's two different sets of top and bottom curves. Well, here's the thing. If we change our rectangle to be right to left, check this out then our rectangle is going to always have a rightmost curve and a leftmost curve, always. So we'll be able to find the area instead of stacking rectangles from left to right if we go bottom to top. The other indication that we should do it this way is that everything's in terms of y. And that tells us to put our rectangles going left to right. So how do we find the area of one of these rectangles? Remember, you've got to keep everything positive. So you want what the right-hand function is minus the left-hand, because a writer a writer, a more right number minus a, a number not so right further to the left is going to give you a positive value. We've got to keep our dimensions positive. So that would be 6 minus y, this, minus y squared. So again, this part is the line 6 minus y. This is y squared. So this whole length is 6 minus y minus y squared. What's the height? Well, it's a really, really small change in y. So that's going to be dy. Everything's in terms of y. So even if you're like, yeah, I don't really care about the concept, that's fine. If it's in terms of y, then you know you've got dy, and you know you're doing right curve minus left curve, or right minus left. And I'll put that up here in the notes. And that's to keep everything positive. OK, so now from here, we need to know what we're stacking. Now, we're not stacking left to right. We're going bottom to top. So we need to know where these two curves intersect in terms of the y values. To do that, like we've done before, we're going to set the two functions equal to each other. So that would be y squared equals 6 minus y. I solve that out by adding y to both sides and subtracting 6. So I add y and then subtract 6. That's equal to 0. And then from there, we factor. So we've got y and y. And the numbers that multiply to negative 6 that add to 1 plus 3 minus 2 set it equal to 0. And what we get here is we get y equals negative 3 and y equals 2, which makes sense. Here we are at some value where y equals negative 3, and here we are at a y value of positive 2. So when we go to integrate this thing, you are integrating, again, the right curve minus the left curve. That's going to give you the length of this rectangle. So that's 6 minus y. That's the rightmost curve minus the leftmost curve. Oh, yes, dy integrated from the bottom value stacked up to the top. So you're taking rectangles and you're stacking them up. And that's going to be from negative 3 to 2. Notice that the entire way up, the right curve is the line, and the left curve is that sideways parabola. Awesome. So that's it. That's the setup. That's what I want you to get down. And then you're in rock and shape. Now, as far as evaluating it goes, not so bad. What we do is integrate like normal. So the integral of 6y or 6 is 6y. We get minus 1 half y squared or y squared over 2 and then minus 1 third y cubed, or y cubed over 3, however you want to look at it. And then we evaluate in our numbers. So I put in 2, I'm going to get 6 times 2 is 12. Then I'm going to get 1 half times 2 squared. I'm plugging in 2 into this. 2 squared is 4 times 1 half is 2. And then 2 cubed is 8 times minus 1 third is minus 8 thirds. So that's the whole first part. Then we're going to evaluate the second part here. Negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. Sweet. Negative 3 squared is 9, 
times the minus 1 half is minus 9 halves. And then negative 3 cubed is negative 27 divided by 1 third, or times 1 third, is negative 9 minus that is plus 9. And now all we're going to do is just simplify everything down. So I'd like to join up the like terms. 12 minus 2 is 10 minus 8 thirds. Minus 18 plus 9 is negative 9. With that negative on the outside is positive 9. Minus a minus 9 halves is going to be plus 9 halves. All right, we join up everything. We'll get 19 minus 8 thirds and 9 halves is going to be minus 16 over 6. That's this. Plus 27 over 6. And when we combine up everything, we're going to get, let's see, 19. And that's going to be, let's see, plus 11 sixths. Oh, my goodness. 6 times 19, because this will be over 6, if we really want to simplify all this down, because you're not going to leave it as a mixed number. Uh, 6 times 19 is 114, I believe, plus 11 is 125 sixths. Ugh. All right. The key here is right minus the left. So we're going to do one other problem. All right, here we go. We'll do one other problem within this, just to kind of see what's going down. And in this particular problem, this is one where we have to actually change everything in terms of x into in terms of y. And so it's one of those occasions where you weren't given things like in this last problem, where things are in terms of y right to start. So how do I know to change it in terms of y? Well, if you look at this, if we do vertical rectangles, you'd have one region here, but then you get to right here, and now you'd have to do another vertical rectangle for that region. That's two regions. That's a lot of math to have to solve through. So we don't want to go through it like that. So then how do we deal with it? Well, if you notice that if we were to tilt our rectangle off on its side, ooh, very nice, then we notice that we're in pretty solid shape, right? So I like that. So we tilt it off to its side, and we're in really good shape. Now, from here, we've got to then solve each of these functions in terms of y so that we can do right minus left. Right now, they're in terms of x. How do we deal with that? Well, this function right here is actually the same as y equals, and that's minus x plus 6. So we're going to change that in terms of y so we can do right minus left. And so that's going to be, well, when we solve for x, you add x and subtract y. It's going to be the same function as the last problem, x equals 6 minus y. Cool. And that actually ends up being our rightmost function. This one right here is going to be a little trickier. y equals minus x squared plus 4x. I figured I'd go over it just in case you have a teacher who gives this to you. We actually have to complete the square. So how do we deal with that? Because we've got to solve for x here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. Get rid of that negative. And so I'll actually, you know what? No, I'll factor out the negative. So we get y. Uh, yeah, no. Let's, let's multiply both sides by negative 1. That'll be easier. Minus y equals x squared minus 4x. To complete the square, you divide this number by 2. Right, we're going to complete the square. We get x minus 2 squared. And we realize that what we just did is we just added 4 to this problem. When we FOIL this out, we add 4. So we've got to add 4 to the other side. And then we solve. So this is going to be gnarly. Um, I'm going to take a square root of both sides. So that'll be plus or minus the square root. So plus or minus the square root of y plus 4, ooh, yeah, this one gets tough, equals x minus 2, and then we add 2 to both sides. So you get 2 plus or minus the square root of y plus 4 equals x. And what I'm going to do on this one, guys, is I'm just going to set up but not evaluate it. Right? We're just going to set up the integral. Oh, we could evaluate it. We'll use our calculator on it, I guess. So x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of y plus 4. That's this curve. It's still the same curve. Ugh. So it's a little bit of a tougher problem. So now what I do is I'm going to take the integral, we'll find the bounds in a little bit, of the rightmost curve, that's ug minus ug, or this minus this. How do you do that? Hmm. Interesting thing happens here. Well, it's going to be 6 minus y minus, and the question is, what is this curve here? Well, this curve is split into two parts. That's the 2 minus part, right? That's the minus piece of it, and this is the plus piece, the right side. So you're going to subtract 2 plus the square root of y plus 4. And while you could integrate that by hand, we're not going to. We're definitely going to do this with a calculator. Now, at this point, you've got your setup, right minus left. The question becomes, what's my bottom value and my top value? Well, the bottom value is very clear. It's 0. right? We're bounded below right here at y equals 0. But the question is, what is this top part? Now, it looks to be y equals 3. 
But to verify that, I'm going to set these two functions equal. It's easier to set those equal to each other. So I get minus x plus 6 is equal to minus x squared plus 4x. And we solve. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides, subtract 4x, it's going to be minus 5x, and plus 6 equal to 0. And then I'm going to factor. Sweet. That's equal to 0. So we get x and x, and then that'll be minus 2 and minus 3. So x equals 2 and x equals 3. Well, it's at x equals 3 that we're concerned with, right? That's the area that we want to know. So if I want to know the y value, I very simply plug it into here. Or this function. They're intersecting at the same point, so I pick the easier one. So y equals uh, minus 3, plugging in x, plus 6. So the y value is 3. So this is the point 3, 3. Which means we're going to raise these rectangles from bottom to top from 0 to 3. And that is your integral. We'll use a calculator to solve that just to expedite things. Because this section, again, is not about relearning how to integrate. That's in chapter 4. You can check out those videos anytime you want. This is all about being able to set things up. Again, I'm going to reiterate, the tough part here was knowing that you have two branches. Basically like this parabola split in half. 2 minus, 2 plus. Right minus left, knowing to solve this in terms of y. It's a tough problem, but I figured it was worth going over a tougher version rather than just going over the simpler version that I gave you here as well. This is a more common kind of problem. All right, I'll be right back with you with the exact answer in uno momento. And through a little bit of editing magic, magic, we've got the answer 0.486. And again, that can be done with your calculator's integration feature. All right, this would definitely be a calculator type problem if given on an A, B, or B, C exam. That's it. Remember, top minus bottom if it's in terms of x because you're sliding rectangles vertically. These were horizontal, so we went right minus left. I'll see you in the next video, the exercises. Peace.